What's good with YouTube? Y'all already know Big Flocko with the convict's perspective. And I'm going to smash, dash, slide on through with a little bit of energy. Please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support this channel. And hit that bell notification for future fire content. I'm going to show you guys some actual communications and filters that are being sent out to the streets amongst NF members and how business is sometimes conducted and coordinated, right? Now, you're going to see some familiar names in this filter. There's certain parts I'm going to block off, like as far as protection for addresses and whatnot. It may um, leave out certain names, but this is exactly how we used to conduct business, how we used to send out filters, how we used to communicate with our set channels or with those that were working under us. Here you go. Greetings and salutations, my brother Oso. Always extending mine on behalf of all camaradas here in Pelican Bay. Listen, bro, there are some issues that need to be brought to your attention, so let me get ahead and get to biz. Gracias. First and foremost, I'm sure you heard about the revisions and modifications concerning NR. NR has been deleted. That doesn't exist any longer. However, the struggle continues under a different pretense with the same objectives and goals. The homie Flaco has the filter word for word. Now then bro, I'm here with the Canal Rojo de Pitas. We are cellies and taking the initial steps in establishing NF territory in Santas. Again, Flaco has a filter. He is working directly under Rojo and will be recruiting soldados to begin a regiment. Rojo and I are under the assumption that you will already belong to a regiment under DB. Is this the case? If so, we all know the guidelines about not discussing biz to anyone outside your squad or regiment. However, we ask that you keep an eye on Flacco. Guide him and give him a little advice. Show him the ropes. However, should you not be committed to DB, we welcome you to join the Santas Regiment under Rojo. If you are interested, Rojo will be out this year. So all Flacco has to do is make a little money, recruit a few, few soldados, have a small arsenal and stay out of jail till Rojo gets out. We'd be honored to have you along if you're not already committed. Flaco has instructions and will get at you more. Death should that take place. If you're already committed, just help young Flaco out and keep an eye out on firm. Gracias. Now, that's the order of biz. Is a personal favor cleared by the Carnal. Listen, also, there is a Haina in Marin who needs to be dealt with. She has endangered the lives of my children and continues to interfere with my family affairs. She is a Sureña dope dealer. Flaco is under orders to hit her pad, rob her, and deal with her. I'd be much more comfortable knowing you have it under control. Take Flaco with you, though. He has photos of her and her address. But here it is again. Now, also, I'm asking you as a brother, por favor, deal with this Haina and let her know it came from me. Gracias. Like I said, she sells dope. And so break her ass. The money can be used to, to help Flacco establish his regiment. I really hope we get to work together. You know the rest. I'm glad you're out, bro. Keep in touch. Now, I didn't have the end of that filter because it had an address that was on it, right? But this was a filter, basically, uh, that was sent to an individual. Lo and behold, this individual was actually working with the law enforcement during Operation Black Widow. Now, as you can witness from the filter, right, it's basically saying that, look, if you're not in contact with anybody or if you have free will out there in the streets and you're not working under a particular seat, then we welcome you to work with us. See, not everything is known about another squad, another regiment. You're not supposed to intervene or try to ask for information. If you decide to do a favor for it right now on your own will, that's upon you as long as it doesn't affect the familia's business. See, all that knowing what the next regiment's doing or what the next area's doing, that was never the case back in the day. It stayed within you and you're basically your squad commander, your regiment commander, whatever it may be you're reporting to. Title's not always important, but the rank and how that position's DNRs are, are all going to be the same. You know, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be uncommon to have two or three regiments operating like in the same vicinity, right? But you try to find ways to where you don't intervene on their authority or jurisdiction. Sometimes you may encounter each other and you have to run a check. That would happen all the time where this regiment or crew is out here to do this. And then next, you know, you're running into them, you know, and you try to avoid all that because technically what one regiment does is not your affairs. It's not your business. 
Now, what you're witnessing or listening to in regards to this kite is the early stages of establishing a regiment. Secure, educate, and maintain, which is the whole focal point of establishing a presence out there in the streets. First, you need to get the manpower. Then you need to get the arsenals and product. Then you need to slowly let things take its course. And in this situation, you have someone that's been sent out there with directives to get the base foundation started, that there'll be a Cardinal coming home. And once the Cardinal comes home, he's going to oversee this crew. So by the time this Cardinal gets home, you sh he should already have some type of foundation, a crew established, and he should probably have a second right underneath him that's working closely in case anything happens to him. See, every time you've been authorized to establish a regiment or a crew, you're supposed to have a, a, a second under you and a third. Therefore, if anything happens, those individuals can continue to do what they've been doing, right? And a lot of times, these individuals may not be directly reporting uh, or ever meet the person that they're working under unless the, the individual above them gets hemmed up. Now, by times, there's uh, you may have requests that are made by certain cardinals to handle some issues that have been cleared once you get out to the streets. Um, I've, been, I've done that, you know what I'm saying? Went out there and collected the debt before that was owed to a certain individual that said that we keep half the debt. So I was got out prior to getting out, given the instructions of who owed the money, how much. And when I went out there, I collected the debt, made sure this people got this much and made sure we got this much. And then I reported everything and submitted it to where it needed to go. In this case, they got a lick for this individual to do. Right. In so many words, it's pretty much telling the person to pretty much deal with this person that could be taken into that can be taken any way that individual wants to. You can actually take that as far as taking the person out if you want. So pretty much they have free liberty to deal with this person any which way they want. But the message is supposed to be sent. And with that, whatever they accumulate from this lick, they get to use as money for the resources to establish the regiment. See, sometimes they may tell you that you have to kick in a percentage from that lick. But in this situation, it's supposed to help them get established. Now, from this kite, as you see, they're asking someone who's more experienced, that's more in the mix, that can maybe help oversee this situation happen. Basically, a brother's asking another brother for a favor. Now, it's up to that brother if he wishes to involve himself or not. But the thing is with that, he must take all full precautions to secure himself that nothing happens, that he doesn't get caught up, right? Because if he gets caught up, you may have a couple of carnales that are on freeze based upon that. For instance, when I went out to the streets to do what I had to do, right, um, the initial request had started in the fourth floor of Santa Clara County Jail. But when that colonel arrived at San Quentin, he pretty much farmed the fucking the venture office to me to go deal with, right? Now, it was up for me to go ahead and deal with it if I felt that it wouldn't intervene with my operations out there in the streets. So I did. And as you can tell, this colonel also was covering his ass by saying, hey, if you're working with this particular C, then A, hey, I'm not asking you to do anything because you know what? We're not supposed to battle in each other's affairs. But he says, but if you're not, or if you're willing to, you're pretty much opening those doors right there. It's pretty much you're asking a request. You're trying to go around any type of channel procedures to get something done because you don't want to go through the process of everybody knows what you're requesting. Believe it or not, there's a lot of operations and a lot of activities that go on that if they don't involve homeboys, right, as far as the venture, it doesn't need to be reported to everybody. Nobody has to be involved. Nobody has to cover their ass because it's, it's another group or someone that's outside of the realm of the North Daniel politics. So by all means, handle that shit. I was always against um, putting thing, too much things on paper. And I was always against like having to report things. You know, like like I said, when we were out there um, and there was individuals that were stepping out that were priority targets. Right. I used to sit there and say there's no reason for us to have to fucking sit there and and give a green light on these individuals or even to try to act upon it. All we got to do is basically let the hoods know that there's an individual by this name that's in bad standings that, Hey, it's up to you whether you want to deal with him when you come across him or not. And that's the same thing that used to be said from some of the regiments. If you run into somebody that was in bad standings, you had the green light if you wanted to go ahead and take action. You did not need to sit there and make a phone call. And a lot of reasons why that was being done was to prevent people getting indicted if they decide to take action towards somebody who's considered an undesirable, someone that's a target. Therefore, you just handle your shit. The Cap Saloon incident was a you know, prime example of how not to do it. You had about like seven, eight people involved. It went from this person to that person. This person went and got the gun. This person dropped it off. And it ended up getting a whole regiment pretty much fucking indicted. That's why even when you get locked up, 
if someone tries to fucking inquire about your regiment activities, about stuff on the streets, by all means, you weren't supposed to say shit to nobody. You would just tell them, hey, reach out to your channel. You know what I mean? I got nothing to say. I was told never to mention anything. And you may have certain seeds that will probably try to fucking push if they can. If you don't know what you're saying, if you don't know how to pretty much uh, respond back. And there's some that just fucking start spilling everything just because they're around a fucking carnal trying to impress them. But the one way you're going to really impress them is by knowing that, hey, I'm not to breach this information. This information is the regiment I was part of. I'm no longer there. Therefore, I'm not actively involved in that regiment. I'm here now. This is my household. If you have any questions, go ahead and get at the SRG. You know what I'm saying? And just leave it there. They can get the GOP. They can go through all the process to make sure that everything you were doing was up to par. You know? Anyways, this is a prime example of how communications are, you know, done as far as when you send out filters. Um, it's not even a filter, a kana, a kite. When you're sending a kite to another brother with instructions of what to do, this is how you send it out because this is more personal. This is more intimate. It's not as far as for everybody's eyes. And kites like this are going out all the time. But a lot of times when someone's paroled, you can be more descriptive. Otherwise, other type of communications, you're using certain codes. You know, and like I said, I always felt that unless it was some um, major business that needed the, you know, higher commands fucking uh, jurisdiction as far as uh, guidance, a lot of times you should be able to know what you need to do out there on the streets and just fucking do it. All that's came of individuals knowing about other regiments or other crews is people get indicted. And a lot of times they're getting indicted for doing shit they shouldn't have been doing in the first place. Anyways, with that said... Boy Flacco, a comics perspective. I got some videos, man, on a comics reaction. I do not know why they keep on flagging them yellow. I got some good ones, though, man. Um, tap into that channel if you haven't subscribed. But that's it. I'm gone.